Ah, yes, the time has come. After nearly a year of hearing Resolve ask, yeah, but is it as good as this is Vara? I can finally say that I've listened to Hyperman's coveted flagship. And what is, without a doubt, big spoiler alert here, the best headphone I've listened to yet. Let's check it out. Okay, so with the jaw-dropping price tag of $6,000, the Susvara stands as the flagship model for Hyphenman's uh, collection of planar magnetic headphones, and it blends Hyphenman's best tech acoustic technologies to deliver a pure listening experience with unparalleled levels of performance. Now, right away I'll say that, as you'd expect for a headphone in this price bracket, yeah, it's superb. So in this video, I'll be sharing my experience uh, listening to a headphone of this caliber in hopes that it'll be helpful for prospective owners or just audio enthusiasts in general. As always, we'll start off by checking out its accessories. While it's not as complete a package as what you get with, for example, a ZMF pair of headphones, you do get some nice case candy packed alongside the Susvara. For starters, there's the box itself, which I would personally say doubles up as a case for the headphones. There's also a book included, which contains a lot of information about the Susvara and hi Man's technologies, as well as a message from Dr. Fang Bian, founder of hi Man. Then there's the included cables, which unfortunately are still the signature hi Man surgery tube variety, but hey, at least you get two of them, with one of them being a single-ended quarter-inch connector and the other one being 4-pin balanced XLR. Moving on to build and comfort, Hyperman isn't exactly known for having good build quality, and in my experience, even some of their high-end models like the Aria can feel a little less than premium when considering their price tag. Nonetheless, I actually think that the design and feel of the Susvara is solid. I think it's adequately well-crafted, and all the moving parts function smoothly, which makes them feel reliable in use. One element of the Susvara that I really appreciate is its comfort, as it might just be the most comfortable flagship headphone I've tried. Once again, we see the use of an HE1000 V2 style headband that uses a suspension strap to evenly and very effectively distribute the Susvara's moderate weight of 450 grams. The hybrid pads also go a long way in making these an easy wear, as they use a very breathable and soft on the skin material on the inner sides of the pads, whilst also providing ample room for users' ears to fit in. One last thing I'd like to note is that unlike the HE1000 V2 or the Aria, the Susvara's ear cups are not nearly as elongated and therefore don't feel like they apply any pressure on the lower side of my jaw. But anyways, let's move on to what I think is most important and that is sound. And as I mentioned earlier, for the Susvara, Hyperman is using the best technologies that they've developed for planar magnetic headphones. So this includes their stealth magnets in combination with their extremely thin nanometer grade diaphragm to achieve uh, a really high level of tonal clarity and balance. Upon my first listen to the Susvara, I was simply taken aback by the clarity that it offered and just how effortlessly it seemed to perfectly reproduce any track I threw at it. Its presentation was fast, engaging, and spacious with a tonal balance that, although a little bit on the more analytical or brighter side, still managed to be very easy to listen to. Now, of course, like all their headphones, it's not perfect, but I do believe that it might have one of the most, if not the most natural sounding frequency response uh, I've heard from a flagship headphone out of the box. Starting off with the bass, the Susvara has what is perhaps the most nuanced and well-textured bass response I've heard on a headphone thus far. It offers exceptional lower register extension, with the sub-bass frequencies being fully surfaced and providing plenty of depth and rumble to the mix. Another thing I'll mention is that, as is usually characteristic of headphones utilizing a planar transducer, and in my experience, particularly noticeable on high command headphones, is that you get an extremely fast leading edge to bass tones, making them feel instant and snappy, further enhancing the great sense of control and precision that the Susvara commands in the lower registers. Now, for my taste and preferences, I do feel as though the bass shelf under 120 hertz or so is set a little bit low in the Susvara. Now, this isn't to say that the bass is impressive, but if you're into something more like the 2018 uh, Harman Target Curve style uh, bass shelf, then I do think that the Susvara could benefit from something like an EQ bass shelf or from a bass boost toggle on your amp or DAC. 
Moving on to the mids, for the most part, I think that the Susvara has a very good tonal balance in its mid range, though it does have two slight deviations. From its lower mids around 300 to 1000 Hz, it provides a defined and rich fundamental range that gives vocals and instruments a rich body. As it reaches the region between 1.5 to 2K, it does seem to have the slight dip that most hi fi man headphones do, and whilst this is not super noticeable, it does make certain instruments like brass instruments or electric guitars lose a little bit of their presence and bite. Then there's also an emphasis at around 4K, which I found could make the mids slightly tinny sounding and could introduce some shout in the upper mids. Something to bear in mind if, like me, you're sensitive to that region of the frequency response. As for the highs, the treble region of the Susvara is excellently reproduced, and despite being just a tiny bit on the brighter side, it sounds to me as though it's remarkably well balanced and natural sounding. The upper mids transition smoothly into a lower treble, whilst the mid treble adequately nuances the overtones in that region of the frequency response. Then there's the upper treble, which also provides good extension and air qualities above 10k. If there's one thing I'll note for the treble range in the Susvara, is that it does have a very slight peak at around 7k. It's not very noticeable, and it doesn't introduce any particularly harsh artifacts, but it can very slightly put a stress on consonant sounds. Aside from that though, the Susvara's highs are some of the best I've heard with well-represented harmonics and a very good top-end strike. Moving along then to technical performance, let's first talk about resolution. And when it comes to detail retrieval and overall image clarity, I feel as though the Susvara easily delivers the best performance I've heard, even performing slightly better than the LCD-5, in my opinion. So it just excels at creating an image of the music that is simply pristine, and it's really great at surfacing all the intricate vocal and instrument tones. Um, and in this regard, I think it'll be a while before I listen to another headphone that delivers this level of performance or that ex exceeds it. As for its soundstage imaging and layering, in case its detail retrieval wasn't enough to impress you, the Susvara has one of the most open sounding and spacious sound stages I've heard in a headphone, which is very good at creating a sense of distance. Additionally, I actually find that the Susvara has extremely precise imaging, delivering better performance than the Aria and being as pinpoint accurate in its ability to position sound as the HD100S. Then, as for instrument separation and layering, I believe that the Susvara might be the top performer I've heard in this category. All instrument and vocal lines are clearly defined and distinguished, with a perfect sense of spacing that further contributes to the headphone's sense of clarity. Lastly, we have dynamics, and this is a category where I feel as though hi fi and headphones, particularly those with larger diaphragms, tend to not perform that well, but that's not the case with the Susvara. So in the top end, it has a great attack, which gives things like acoustic guitar strings a weighty snap and percussive instruments a satisfying bite. At the same time, I do actually feel as though they have a satisfying kick in the low end. Um, it may not kick as hard as something like an LCD-5 or some of Focal's offerings, but it's still certainly a very engaging and lively headphone to listen to. Just to mention EQ very briefly before heading into inclusion, like I said earlier, the Susvara has, for my taste and preferences, the most natural and easily enjoyable tonality of the flagship headphones I've tried. So my EQ only makes some small adjustments. If you'd like to try out my settings, there will be a link in the description down below to a post I've made on the headphones community forums, which has all my EQ presets for every headphone I've reviewed. Okay, so now to wrap up this review. It feels like it was only yesterday that I sat down to listen to the LCD-5 for the first time, and I had my mind blown. At the time, I thought, can it really get any better than this? And well, you see, as it turns out, if you have an additional $2,000 to spend on a Susvara, yes, it can. The Susvara is a headphone that delivers on just about every front, with little to no compromise whatsoever. If somebody asked me what I think the best headphone out there is at the time of making this video, or what headphone, money no object, somebody should buy, it would be the Susvara. Of course, the vast majority of us cannot afford a headphone like this, but I still have to say that with its excellent tonal balance, summit tier technical performance, and comfortable build, the Susvara is the definition of end game headphone. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. If you'd like to learn more about the Susvara or many other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show here on YouTube. And until next time, this is Chrono signing off.